Hey, this is Christopher Kai with Aim High with Christopher Kai, where we interview inspiring people doing amazing things. Today's guest is Steven Carson. He literally quit his job to pursue his dreams, and his dream is like insanely inspirational and exceptional. Steven, please share with our audience what that dream was and what you do now. All right, well, um, <clears throat> what I do now is I live the life of my dreams every single day. And the way that came about is that uh, I was actually stuck in the rat race a very short time ago, uh, about nine months ago. Uh, what I would have told you is that uh, I really don't enjoy what I do. I don't like the work that, I, that I'm a, a part of. And, uh, you know, I, I would seek to do pretty much anything except for what I was doing. And uh, I had just been exposed to um, the, the truth that I actually could change my own life, that I didn't need to be stuck in um, either the rat race or, or just what, the formula that other people had for me. And so... What was this rat race for you? You said your uh, insurance? Yeah, I had, I, insurance. I had my notary commission, my insurance license, uh, a few other professional licenses, and I was selling products that I didn't care a whole lot about, uh, to be frank. And so, um, you know, I, I was following a formula that was given to me by well-meaning people, well-intentioned people, um, but it had nothing to, to do with what was on my heart and my, my purpose and my passion for, for living. And so uh, one day I was sitting there uh, discussing with my wife the, the potential that we had for just taking a, a short vacation to a place that we really loved. And it's, uh, it's a cloud forest. It uh, sits about 8,000 feet up in the air down in South Mexico. It's a really amazing place. And um, we were hoping that we could even squeak out maybe three weeks with uh, her schedule, my schedule, and, and all these different things. And, and in a moment of clarity, I looked at her and I realized that I only had two options. And it was either now or it was never. And by default, I had been choosing never by not choosing anything at all. And uh, the same was true of most of the people around me. And I realized right then that I had to choose now. And so I looked at her and I said, we're gonna stop talking about our dreams and we're gonna go live them and we're not gonna do it someday we're gonna do it now and so I set a timeline for myself of 90 days and within 90 days I had given away everything that I had all the possessions that I owned in the world other than a couple of suitcases and the clothes inside of them I packed up those suitcases my two baby girls <clears throat> the one-year-old and a two-year-old and my wife jumped on a plane and flew off to a destination where we knew essentially nobody. And uh, ever since, we've been living our dreams for the last seven months. It's been a wild adventure and uh, something I highly recommend. It's amazing. That's awesome, that's awesome. What are some of the challenges you feel that you face because let's say some of our viewers want to pursue their dreams and there's some challenges along the way. What are some things that you face and how you overcame those things? Um, the two primary ones that I would say is, um, first is the critics. And that's going to be often almost everybody, um, you know, and especially the people close to you uh, because you really care about their opinion, right? And can, you care about them and you want them to be proud of you. And yet when you go to do something audaciously courageous like this, um, you're often met with a lot of uh, negativity and, and people that tell you you can't do it. Um, for whatever reason they may have. It might be um, because they actually really want to do what you're doing, but they're too fearful to. It may be for, it, it doesn't really matter what the reason is, but the critics come out in droves whenever you decide to go do something like this. And the second one is the critic that lives inside your own mind, right? And the one that tells you that you're not, you can't really pull it off and you actually need the, this security blanket, this safety net that's been told to you that you need this, you know, 401k and white picket fence and, and all these different things that everybody has been taught to believe that they need. When in reality, once you take a, a step into the fear of the unknown, I, I liken it to like this, uh, this cloud bank of uh, fog, right? And, and in there is, is something that you don't know what's there. But once you step inside, then all of a sudden the, the, it, you're, you're inside of it and you realize there's really nothing here, yeah. right? And so your fear becomes, becomes uh, laughable, really. So fear is actually like, it's, it's fake. Fear is fake. There's, um, that's, that's a great line. What's one thing you would say to someone that is watching this program, is at a job they hate, what's that one advice that you would give to this person? Believe in yourself because you actually can do what you dream about and you were actually sent here to do that. You weren't sent here to, to, to remain in the cubicle or wherever it is that, that you're at because uh, understand that what was impressed upon your heart, what is what lives inside of you and the thing that you contemplate all the time and that you want to do, that's what you are supposed to do. And it doesn't matter what anybody else tells you. It really doesn't. If It doesn't matter if it's your best friend or your parents or, or anybody else. 
it, you're supposed to do that thing. That's, that's the reason you're here. And, and once you decide to do it, everything falls.